Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of NASCAR Underdogs. Jeremy Mayfield. Jeremy Allen Mayfield was born May 27, 1969 in Owensboro, Kentucky. He started racing BMX bikes, then moved over to go-karts around the local short tracks. At age 19, he started racing at Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. Before long, he went to work for Sadler Brothers Racing Team as a fabricator. Then he became their driver. Even winning the late model Rookie of the Year at the 3 8 mile track uh, Kentucky Motor Speedway in Whitesville, Kentucky. In 1992, Mayfield made his first career ARCA Series start in the season finale in Atlanta, driving the Sadler Brothers number 95 Oldsmobile, finishing 40th. So in 1993, Jeremy ran full-time in the ARCA Series driving for the Sadler Brothers Racing. He drove a number 95 and a number 5 Chevy and Oldsmobile for Sadler Brothers. His best start was first in the summer at Day Quinn, and his best finish was first in the spring at FRS. Overall, they scored one pole, one win, eight top fives, and ten top tens, ending the 1993 ARCA season fourth in the final points. He also attempted four, four Cup Series races, only qualifying for the fall race at Charlotte, finishing 29th driving the number 95 Ford for Sadler Brothers Racing. Now in 1994, Mayfield and the Sadler Brothers Racing number 95 Ford attempted seven out of the first nine Cup Series races of the season. They DNQ'd three times. Their best finish was 27th in the spring at Charlotte, or spring at Richmond, rather. Then he made four starts for the number 02 Ford for Taylor Racing. His best finish there was 21st in the spring at Charlotte. Now, starting at race 17 at Pocono, Jeremy took over the number 98 Finger Hut Ford driving for Kelly Yarbrough Motorsports. Jeremy ran the remainder of the 1994 season for Yarbrough, attempting all the remaining 15 races, DQing three more times. His best finish was a 19th place at Rockingham in the fall. For 1995, Mayfield ran his first full time season in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. He attempted all the races, qualifying for 27 out of 31. His best finish was 5th in the fall at Atlanta. His best finish was 8th in the summer at Pocono. Overall, they scored 1 top 10, and they finished 31st in Final Cup Series points. He attempted 8 Bush Series races for Bobby Jones in the number 50 UAW Ford. He qualified for 7 of them races. His best start... And his best finish also was both 12th in the spring at Darlington. His best finish was 12th at Charlotte in the spring. 1996 was definitely a step forward for Mayfield. He again was behind the wheel of the Kelly Arbor Motorsports number 98, this time RCA Ford. His best start was first in the fall at Talladega, and his best finish was fourth in the spring at Martinsville. At race 24, the number, 20, number 37 Kmart Little Caesars Ford, and owned by Michael Cranfus, and the number 98 team swapped drivers. John Andre moved over to the number 98, and Jeremy moved to the number 37 full-time. In seven starts for the number 37 team, his best start was third in the fall at Charlotte, and his best finish was 15th in the fall at Dover. He did DNQ for the season finale in Atlanta. Overall, he scored one pole, zero wins, two top fives, and two top tens, ending the 1996 season 25th in final points standings. Jeremy ran 13 Bush Series races for Meredith Rex North Star Motorsports in the number 98 Ford. His best start was ninth, and his best finish was seventh, both in the fall at Richmond. Overall, they scored two top tens. Then in 1997, Jeremy ran full time. For number ninety or number thirty-seven, Kmart RC Cola Ford, still owned by Michael Cranfus. Championship crew chief Mike or Paul Andrews was going to serve as crew chief for him this season, so that was awesome. Now, again, this season his progress continued. His best start was twelfth in the summer at Michigan. His best finish was fourth at Dover in the spring. Overall, they scored zero poles, zero wins, three top fives, and eight top tens, 
finishing the 1997 season 13th in final point standings. Jeremy and the entire number 37 team was bought out by Roger Penske. And the number, thir number, well, controlling interest was bought out by Roger Penske. And the number 37 was changed to the number 12 for the, number, for the 1998 season. He also became a teammate to Rusty Wallace. The team became the number 12 Mobile One Ford. His best start was first in the spring at Texas. His best finish was first in the summer at Pocono, where he, in fact, used Dale Earnhardt's bump and run tactic, so to speak, to get by him there in the last lap and go to victory. Now, he spent pretty, this team spent half the season in the top five in points, even leading to the point standings for four weeks. Overall, Mayfield scored one pole, one win, 12 top fives, and 16 top tens, finishing the 1998 season 7th in final point standings. And that was his first career victory at Pocono also. So that was, it was a pretty big season for Jeremy Mayfield. Now, the next season in 1999 wasn't exactly the season that Mayfield and the team was looking for. His best start was second in the fall at Rockingham. His best finish was second in the spring at Darlington. Overall, they scored zero poles, zero wins, five top fives, and 12 top tens. Ending the 1999 season to 11th in final point standings. The 2000 season. And Jeremy remained with the Penske South number 12 Mobile One Ford full time. He was forced to miss two races due to a concussion he suffered in a hard crash in the practice for the Brickyard 400 at Indy. His best start was first four times in the spring at Talladega, in the fall at Rockingham, Darlington, and Dover. The pole he won at Talladega. Resulted, and, and I mean he ended up finishing 14th that day at Talladega, resulted in a 151 point penalty handed out by NASCAR due to the car not passing inspection. His best finish was first twice in the spring in California and Pocono. Overall, they scored four poles, two wins, six top fives, and 12 top tens en route to a disappointing 24th place in final point standings. The following season in 2001, Jeremy started the 2001 season intending to drive the number 12 Mobile One Ford full-time again this season. That is not... That is not what happened, though. When Mayfield was let go following race 28. This because Jeremy decided to sign with Ray Evernham to drive the number 19 Dodge starting in 2002. So Roger Penske got upset and released him early. His best start was third three times in the spring in Fontana, then in the summer at Loudoun, and in the fall at Darlington. His best finish was third, also three times, in the spring at Bristol and Darlington, then in the summer walking saloon. Overall, they scored zero poles, zero wins, five top fives, and seven top tens in 28 starts. So, I mean, Mayfield indeed did move over to the Everham Motorsports Dodge team in their number 19 full-time for the 2002 season. His best start was third in the spring in Darlington or in the spring at Bristol, rather. His best finish was second in the spring at Las Vegas. Overall, they scored two top fives and four top tens, finishing the 2002 Cup Series season, 26th in the final point standings. At times during the first season together, you could see flashes of much a much better team than the stats would be showing. So, I mean, in 2003, this really started to come to fruition. Mayfield's best start was first in the spring at Talladega. His best finish was second, twice, in the fall at Richmond and Dover. Overall, they scored one pole, zero wins, four top fives, and 12 top tens, improving his final points standings finish to a solid 19th place. Now, Jeremy made one Bush Series start for his Everham Motorsports team. In the number 79, Mountain Dew Dodge, at Rockingham, starting third and finishing fourth. Also, he made his first truck series start in Jim Smith's number 07 Dodge at Charlotte, starting 12th and finishing 6th. The following season, in, in 2004, Mayfield continued to improve. He was able to find his way back to victory lane at Richmond in the fall. Also, now the cutoff race for the newly found newly formed Chase for the Cup. The only way he was going to make the chase is to 
win, and that's what he did. His best start was first twice, in the spring and fall at Dover, both races. His best finish was first in the fall at Richmond, like I said. He indeed made the chase that first season. It was even ever in existence. Overall, they scored two poles, one win, five top fives, and 13 top tens, on his way to finishing 10th in the final point standings. He made one start in the Bush Series, in Tommy Baldwin's number six at Fontana, starting fourth and finishing 18th. Continuing the team's success in 2005, Ray Abraham and Jeremy Mayfield once again was together this season as well. With Jeremy behind the wheel of the number 19 Dodge Dealers Dodge, his best start was second twice, in the spring at Texas and in the summer at Indy. His best finish was first in the summer at Michigan. Once again, Jeremy qualified for the chase for the cup this season. Overall, they scored zero poles, one win, four top fives, and nine top tens, finishing the season ninth of final points. Then in the Bush series, Former Penske teammate Rusty Ball assigned Mayfield to drive part-time for his Bush, Bush Series team. In nine starts in the number 64 Miller High Life Dodge for Rusty Wallace Motorsports. His best start was seventh, and his best finish was sixth in the spring at Bristol. He also made four starts for Ray Abraham, three in the number six, and one in the number 79. His best start was eighth in the fall at Charlotte, and his best finish was eighth in the spring at Darlington. Overall, he scored two top tens. Everything between Everton and, and Mayfield went down the drain, following some comments that Jeremy made about how Everton, well, was an, quote, absentee owner, and how he was spending most of his, his time working with development driver Aaron Crocker, even stating that they had a, and again, quote, close personal relationship. This caused Everton to release Jeremy and replace him with Bill Elliott for the race at Watkins Glen. Later, Ray would admit that he indeed was having a serious affair with Crocker, to whom he even married in 2009, and to this day remains married to. His best start was second twice in the spring at Charlotte and Dover. His best finish was 13th in the, in the spring at Talladega. He did make two attempts, one start, he did make two attempts, and only qualified once, one start in the number 09, Mesquite May Gaming, Lottery, Dodge, owned by James Finch at Homestead, starting 32nd and finishing 42nd. Jeremy did manage to make one Bush Series start early in the season at Fontana for Everham, driving the number 9 Auto Value Dodge, starting 34th and finishing 35th, as well as making two starts in the Truck Series, driving for Billy Ballou's number 15 Chevrolet. His best start was 13th in the fall at Atlanta, his best finish was 23rd in the spring at Talladega. Or spring at Las Vegas. Wow. Without many options, Mayfield signed with the dying team of Bill Davis Racing. He drove the number 36, 360 OTC Toyota. It was a horrible season. In fact, he attempted 31 races in that number 36, only qualifying for 13 events. His best start was 13th in the spring at Martinsville, and his best finish was 22nd in the fall at Kansas. Mayfield and Davis mercifully parted ways following another DNQ for race 32 at Martinsville. Jeremy was able to make the final four starts of the season, driving the number 66 for Gene Haas. His best start was 34th in the fall at, Mar at Homestead, and his best finish was 22nd in the fall at Texas. He ended the season 45th in final points. As for the 2008 Cup Series season, Jeremy ran the first seven races for Gene Haas in the number 70 Chevrolet. His best start was 23rd, and his best finish was 16th, both in the spring at Las Vegas. He did make one other start in the number 40 Target Dodge for Chip Ganassi in the spring at Dover, starting 10th and finishing 25th. Jeremy and his wife decided to form Mayfield Motorsports, a NASCAR Cup Series team, the number 41 All Sport Body Quencher Toyota. They attempted the first 11 races, only qualifying for 5, but including the 2009 Daytona 500. His best start was 18th in that said Daytona 500, and his best finish was 32nd in the spring at Talladega. On May 9, 2009, Mayfield was suspended indefinitely by NASCAR due to his substance abuse policy, testing positive for methamphetamine. Mayfield stated that the combination of prescri prescribed medication along with over-the-counter medication 
reacted together, resulting in false positives. He continues to deny it. So, honestly, who knows? Now, Clarendon D was the said over-the-counter medication and was a reg very uh, you know, higher-up sponsor in NASCAR at the time. And the rumor is that NASCAR didn't want to, you know, smear their name by admitting it gives false positives on drug tests. But, you know, this video is about his racing career, not all the drama surrounding it necessarily. In 433 Cup Series starts, he scored 9 poles, 5 wins, and 96 top 10 finishes. He ran 36 Bush Series races, scoring 5 top 10s, even finishing in the top 10 in points in the Cup Series 3 times. He drove for big teams such as Penske, I mean Everham Motorsports, and I mean Bill Davis Racing, even though it was on its way down. I mean, Jerry Mayfield's been through a lot. He's even racing, and he's winning again. Driving late models on little local short tracks around his area. Well, thanks for watching, guys, and take care.